Hello everyone, this is Anne from Odulcina Scrap. Today I want to go back to an old journal, junk journal project that I've been doing for since almost the beginning and I still love that format and uh, I've never did it with a bag. It's just a six by nine bag. But when I got those bag from Claire, uh, Claire Scrap Forever, I just thought they would be so perfect to create a mini junk journal like this. So I used to do this format with an envelope, a six by nine envelope. And now I'm doing the same thing, uh, but with this bag. So look at that. With the bag, the difference is you have a pocket so you can put little surprises and it does the cover and then inside and you can decorate and it adds like some laces and ruffles on the side and then inside you can put I think I've put let me see like I'll show you different different papers of different sizes so it goes with the shabby chic look <laughs> This is kind of acting like a pocket. Polka dots, embossing like texture paste. And the paper that has been coffee stained. And the signature is done with a seam binding that we attach here and we use the same seam binding to do the closure here. But we can do the same thing with uh, chiffon silk or sari silk instead and just to decorate those I'm just using a little cluster that I've been done that I've been doing previously so I don't ha know if you you're like me you have the white page syndrome that I would call it like I never know where to start so most of the time I just sit at my table and I do snippets I do little decorations. I have no clue when I'm gonna use them and for what, but when I have a stash of them, it's so easy to just try them on my project and then complete the, the whole thing. So for me, it's my way to, to kind of create. I create without the pressure of figuring out how to start. I just mix them together after that and I don't kind of restrain my creativity that way. So yeah, so it's really like a fun format, um, small, perfect to give as a little gift, as an happy mail. Same for this one. See, there's a pocket here. And see, this one was a snippet that I've done with the little um, woman, the fussy cut woman from Claire. And it's just adding some laces and that, that was it. So you have a pocket and then you can place your papers. And I'm going to do one with you all. Oh, this page. I love it. It's just a um, book page and I stamped on it. And in order to do the colors like that on your stamp is that I'm using ink pens. Yeah ink pens and I'm just putting the ink where I want with a pen these are these were the stampin up pens in case you wonder so just different papers different sizes and look at the middle it's it is really gorgeous with having a ribbon there instead of the typical tread but you would have a hard time to do that with a bigger journal. So it's perfect for a small journal like that because you don't have that much of pages. I think I'm I'm placing it somewhere between 10 and 15 pages max. And then at the back, there's a special trick because the bag here is really thin and there's nothing. So I put inside the bag for this middle. So we have some cushiness there and some volume there. I'm placing either this kind of paper from a pattern or this paper, because 
because you know the cushiness of that paper is so fun so I'm just cutting it to size this one is too small and it's going to do my caution there so let's do one journal together so if you are a beginner I'm going to show you how to do how to sew the signature and how I do those little book if you're not a beginner that might still be interesting <laughs> but I'm going to do the basic steps just for in case you are a beginner and you need to know those steps so I'm going to use this pattern paper first I'm going to fold my bag into two so I can know where is the middle because I want the this uh, paper kind of pattern paper to be only in this middle this first part will be a pocket and I'm gonna fill it with other stuff so I don't need to put anything there for now so let me just see how it goes with the size so this would be perfect I don't put too much I just want to have some sort of a um, a little bit of cushiness in the middle but not too much so it doesn't need to be perfectly uh, cut or trimmed or as long as it seems like everywhere is about the same uh, same amount of paper so mine it's a bit too big let me show you so you can see like this and this side was not straight so it's a little bit too big this would be good so let me remove that and I'm gonna place it inside and because of the signature and everything I don't need to glue it I don't need to do anything the signature will prevent it from moving to the other side and even if it moves a little bit inside we don't really care so now let's start with this snippet that I've done ephemera not even sure which name we should give to that but anyway it's just a normal tea so this is my uh, labels that I typically print on fabric and I thought I should do some projects with the labels printed on paper because I know it's not everybody that prints on fabric or or might, might, might want to use papers instead. So this is my labels printed on paper. And I've put a tea bag there, herbal tea, and some cheesecloth grade 90, and just a little bit of lace for the whole back of it. That's all for now. And I think this might go well there. And I just brought a couple of items with me on the table so we can play. Um, and I'm thinking too, for where we're gonna have the signature, we need to reinforce that a little bit. So I'll give you some examples. Here I've been using a chiffon silk that, or a sari silk that I just, let me open that so you can see well. Uh, you can see we have a length of sari silk here that I've sewn and I've sewn this portion here because I just wanted to create kind of a pocket here with the polka dot this was for that for this one it's a little bit different I just put a couple of pieces of laces glued where my holes will be and that's it so when we fold it we can see the laces there like if it's an open spine journal but it's not an open spine but i, I love the design for this one that i'm going to do with you i'm going to use this polka dot this polka dot here fold it into two that should look like that about like that and 
I'm gonna have this and I just find that the the off-white and black dots goes well with the bag that has a lot of black and the beige and everything so yeah this is what I'm gonna do for the glue we don't want to add any glue where we are gonna do the signature especially the hot glue gun you could use the glue stick to kind of glue it this way but then you would go do a sewing all around because the glue stick won't hold forever so I'm gonna go with the odd glue gun but I'll make sure I don't put any glue in the middle because otherwise I'm gonna have a hard time to do my signature so first I'm gonna do a little line at the top to kind of hold my to hold it there and then I'm gonna just put some glue on the side and I'm gonna create some folds while I'm gluing it to the glue I'll do kind of one side at a time because this glue is uh, drying fast so so you create folds in any direction with your spatula so you don't burn your fingers and that should be it let me turn that Okay, at this point I can trim the excess here and I keep going on oh I'll just do all at the same time let's try that <laughs> it looks great it looks great actually I love that so if I fold it back, there's no glue on the fold line at all. But look at that. And now if I place this back, this is great. I can place it in the middle or with an angle more like that. I think I'll just go like that. Okay, so let's start. First, I have this uh, Crafty Me Shop applique that I'm thinking I can maybe use here to create the edge. And I wonder if that would fit. Mm-hmm. I like that. So what I'll do is I'll, I want to make sure that it fits the flower here. So I'm going to glue the applique to, I've put maybe too much glue, so. I don't really want to have the glue showing, so I'm going to remove a little bit of glue with my spatula. Okay, phew, I've removed all of that. Okay, now that they are kind of stick together, I can make sure that my side here is aligned with the edge of the bag. So it can go a little bit outside, but that it seems like it's aligned. And if I look at all that, it looks great. So I'm ready to glue. And um, I'm gonna put some glue here just like that and here as well
here it's about this just adding some glue but I'm not gluing down every part of it I want some fluffiness somewhere like this and this last part I'm gonna glue with here 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 and here I think sometimes we tend to glue a little bit too much and then we don't have any waves on our fabric and uh, this makes the whole difference to have some fabric that is not glued down perfectly so it's not that flat when you glue this way so now let's see okay I should have wait a little bit but there's no mistakes you can always carefully because I don't want to rip the bag <laughs> and open the pocket but I'm gonna remove the glue here for this part because I want to place see there's no mistake even if you forget something or you want to re-add something it's kind of never too late this is great what about maybe some tool here yeah it's great with some tool just a bit too big too big and too large okay so what about something like this I'm gonna start with gluing this part down and then I can work with creating folds and waves and with the two the lace and the see I can create a fold here with the tool and then when I'm gonna stick down this flower it will hold it there you go and here might want to put it under I think I'm going to trim this a little bit so it doesn't show. And this too. It's too long. something like that gluing it down again this portion of the the applique I'm going to apply a good pressure just to make sure it flattens a little bit okay I'm losing my beads I don't mind for this one but see this is my thread and it needs a little bit of glue so it it holds there so I don't lose my other pearl here so I'm adding a little bit of glue and um, well look at that so far I could use I could put a little bow here or here more decorations 
I need to remember that my signature will be using a chiffon silk and I'm gonna use this um, this white to beige chiffon silk so it's kind of a two color and it switched back and forth between the two colors so I'm gonna select a section that has no sewing that is at least 30 inches so this is what I'm gonna do I can do it right now actually I'm gonna measure that 24 yeah between my two signature my two sewing here I have more than 30 inches so I'm gonna use this section to do my signature So it will look a little bit like that. Isn't it great? You, you can see the different colors. So that should look great. So we're going to have this here. So I don't want to add too much in the middle here. Plus, I'm going to create I can use like this. Add a card inside with some laces and uh, cheesecloth and see it adds a little bit there and then we have the chiffon silk like that so maybe I can just add something here a little bow that could be using the same let me try to see if I would love the bows where <laughs> the tail is small I don't know why but it's not so bad I just don't want to hide the pearls there and um, I'm gonna use some polka dot here like a good portion of polka dot that I just fold in different ways place it like that yeah that looks great so I'm gonna redo my folds hold it like that put a bit of glue there my bow I'm gonna use this spatula and then I can trim a little bit the edges so it doesn't look too squarish All right, this will look a little bit like that. When I did my first journal, I did a similar signature. Like I've been doing, I've been using the same kind of papers. I've placed them the same order and uh, they're not identical. I mean, the music is not the same music page because it's, it's a real one but it's always like if I take a paper I cut it into two I can do two journals most of the time so I won't do the signature with you it's just a bunch of papers and I'll just count one 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve pieces of paper and that's it. This is kind of tracing paper that I coffee stained. So because it's really like delicate, I've added some faux tape there that I, faux age tape. I'll put a link in the description below uh, for my tutorial on how to do those faux age tape, which is really easy, but there's always new people on my channel that might just be starting and discovering this wonderful world of junk journals and um, you might want to know how to do that so okay i have my 12 papers signature and what i want to do now is attach it to my cover so i'm gonna use my dictionary the best is really to find a big book like a dictionary you kind of open it in the middle because you're going to use this crease in the middle to kind of hold everything together. So I'm placing my papers just to make sure they are, they fit well inside my journal. And I'm going to use a tool to poke the holes. I love this, um, this set that I've got. I have my needles. Oops. I have my needles there. I can use that when it's hard to push through. I have wonderful little scissors and I'll put links in the description below because I've been asked where I took them. Um, they are on Amazon. So they have a few examples. So I'll put one link and from there Amazon will suggest you more and you should be able to find one that you like and it's in the for Canadian it's in the $20 for like $21 for this whole set and those scissors they go really well so anyway it's a gift idea from you to you give to your mom whatever I gave a couple so far to my friends my mom <laughs> they all loved it because we don't really find that in the stores. So I'm gonna poke a hole first in the middle. You can measure, I just eyeball. So I'm gonna do one hole in the middle. And then I want to go at least one inch inside to make sure I grab all the smaller paper. So I'm gonna do like, you can even do more than an inch. I'll do this. So, and then you need to kind of just try to be similar on the other side or you measure so but this last one when i'm going to do the hole i'm going to keep my my little uh, tool inside the hole so it it holds them together it's going to be helpful all right so i have my holes done now as you saw me i've cut a 30 inches long chiffon silk, seam binding, sari silk, what, which one you want to use. If your sari silk or chiffon silk is a bit too big, it might be more bulky. So I suggest you find one that is not too large or that feel it feels like it's thin. If it's too big, you can always um, cut a little bit of it and then divided like you just tear and you're gonna have a short um, a smaller piece there so mine is okay so I'm gonna just use one of my needles and I'm gonna use a needle that has like a big hole there so this one is really big for nothing I'm gonna use one of those two here these are embroidery needles and yeah because if you take a needle where the hold is not big enough you're gonna have a bulk here of the 
seam binding or chiffon silk and it's going to be hard sometimes to pull through your papers and your cover. So we start from the outside because we want the a length to be like that. If we start from the inside, our, our chiffon silk will be inside and we want it outside because we want to use it as a closure. So we start from the outside. Now I'm trying to not move my papers, but because I have this tool in one of the, the holes, it prevents a little bit them from moving. I think the paper moved. So I'll go in like that. I'm going to keep keep it like that before I lose it. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to pass through this first one and I'm going to go. So I'm going to use the pliers to help a little bit because it's a bit bulky and I'm pulling but I'm gonna leave like a, a good amount here because I I need to keep it for my closure and this one I'm gonna use it to come back through this hole so I'm gonna go the other hole there because from the inside it goes really well to go out it's harder to come back in the middle, so. Now I'm gonna go outside. I can see my hole there. Hopefully you can see it too. And for this one, let me see if I see well, oh yeah. Okay, you cannot really see, but I can see the hole was here. So I'm getting inside. And now I can remove this tool and see how it goes easy because the paper, the papers didn't move. And I'm going to pull again. All right, I now need to go back outside. In order to do that, I kind of put a tension so I'm not poking through the chiffon silk. And I'm gonna try to go, so I'm already here. What I'm gonna do, because it was not that easy, I'm gonna pull through that and then I'm gonna go through the cover and then I'm gonna adjust everything, so. And then I'm going to go out. So I put a little tension so I'm not poking through through the chiffon silk. And now like this. Perfect. Okay. Let's remove the needle and then we're going to adjust everything. So I'll just try to make them both the same length. <laughs> This one is really shorter. So this one is, if I pull a little bit, it's pulling exactly this one. So it's this one that I need to pull to reduce the other one. And then if I go like that, go like that, and then go like that, now they have the same length. All right, now I don't want that gap here, so so, 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 I'm going to pull on both a little bit. Now that it's okay, I'm going to pull on both as well. So, I verified that the tension here seems cute. We don't want it to be too tight. We just want it to look cute and that it's not so loose. And now here, we're going to put one on a side 
and one to the other side. So if I put it flat, we are on both sides and we're gonna attach it with two little knots. So before I close my first knot, this is the time where you can add something. Let's say I can add a little bit of tool. I can add a little piece of of the same chiffon silk or saris silk and then I can do the knot and this will add some dimension so it can be just one knot or two depending on how um, how bulky it is in this case I'm gonna do just one when I did this one with the seam binding I did two knots so but it, it's whole it's holding well so I'm gonna just do one and then I can do my little bow here the bow can be at the front or totally on the side whatever you prefer I'm gonna put it there because it's gonna create little decoration here in the middle like that and then you can trim the excess don't trim it too short here you go how easy was that it's really really easy and yeah it's a nice squishiness it's a nice format it's not too big it is kind of a shabby chic so I love those bags I did those three kind of miniature three small junk journals using a six by nine bag this one and it is just perfect I hope it inspired some of you thanks for watching and God bless you bye bye